Good morning viewers, it's around 7.42 a.m. on this Thursday morning. We're driving out of Margate, uh, Shirley Beach area on the south coast. We've just done a sleepover at some friends last night and we're heading out, just Kevin and I, to Lesotho. Uh, no real plans for Lesotho, we have plus minus 500 k's to go to get to Simon King Lodge, which is our first stop. But should we, uh, Maybe I'll stop. yeah, should we decide we want to bush camp or stop along the way? Um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So there's no rush. Good morning, everybody. Beautiful winter morning on the south coast. Can I'll show you now. Traffic volumes low. Should make for a a really nice drive out. See you later, Jazz. At quarter to one, we've arrived at Kaja's Neck Border Post, which is going to go in. Hopefully, it will be a quick one. See you all in the Sutu. So, we're busy climbing up uh, between the Maluti Mountains. Kevin, do you have on your GPS our current? Uh, Altitude? Yeah, our current elevation 1730 meters above sea level and counting. That's our route, folks. You can see we're still climbing after this 1700 odd meters above sea level. We're now sitting at 2200 meters above sea level there. Heading towards 2400 and beyond.
We've just arrived at the campsite. Absolutely stunning. Kevin's just gone through to bring Bush Baby. But look at this view, guys. Who wouldn't want to wake up to this every morning? Little piece of paradise. Seems like we're the only campers here for the weekend. We've got all of this to ourselves for now. So this is the campsite at Semong Kong Lodge. Not, not exactly a, a large campsite or very well maintained. Actually a little bit disappointing. Um, they are electrified sites as you can see. But the sites are small and you can possibly get four, maybe five camps in here. And there is a little bit of a bra area with a picnic table not very well maintained um, the bra grids are almost non-existent but it is ideally situated alongside the river and back there at the entrance is where the pub the lounge and restaurant are oh, right below the reception area. And these stairs here lead up to the ablutions up there. Males and females, males on our right as we look at it and females on the left. further to that there's another set of stairs and back there that white door is a communal kitchen I'll give you guys a, a look just now at both the communal kitchen and the evolutions
So these are the ablutions that we looked at from the bottom. As I said, men's on the right, ladies on the left. And as you can see, quite basic. Clean though, but basic. One um, wash basin, two showers. Um, two urinals and one toilet. There is hot and cold water, running water with an electric geyser but the water pressure is um, very 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 sparse so a very low water pressure. There's a wash up area outside between the two bathrooms And this is the ladies, a little bit prettier, for some reason they believe that the ladies need a bit more prettiness than us men do. Here's a shower, toilet, another toilet, and another shower. As I said, a lot prettier, a lot neater. Let's have a look at the communal kitchen. This is the communal kitchen. Basic, but everything works. Just a word of warning. Um, the Lesotho electricity department switches the electricity off to the entire town at 10 p.m. every night at 10 p.m. and switches the electricity back on at 8 a.m. So 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. no electricity if you are reliant on electricity. It is advisable to bring your own drinking water with, however, as you can see here, you can drink the water from the communal kitchen taps um, and you can ask for your bottles to be refilled at the pub. Tonight's dinner is at the Duck and Donkey Tavern. Good morning guys. Today Kevin and I decided to take a horse ride down to the waterfall. Um, it's called the Maletsanyane Falls. Yeah, normally uh, I think it's about a 5k walk. We would have liked to do the 5k hike but uh, yeah, we just want to have the Basutu experience and travel by horseback. There's our horses waiting out there. And this is our, these this are is the lovely gentlemen that are going to take us through. Okay, hi, my name is Mchichi. I am going to be at the guide. Yeah. I have the horses, the Vasutu pony.
we just got back from our horse ride. It was an amazing little adventure. We just decided to start a little campfire, warm up some lunch, and then see what the rest of the evening holds. Probably go back to the restaurant and have some dinner there and stick around around that warm fireplace. So there goes our three alarm clocks this morning at, I think it was at about half past six. Here they go, noisemakers. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, they were not open for breakfast because it's just the two of us and then all their staff haven't arrived. So we'll catch them next time in October when we bring a group of people here. They're a very, pretty new establishment. Um, nothing else here is operational yet. The conference center, none of that is really up and running yet. So hopefully by the time we get, get here in October, they'll be up and running. And yeah, we'll uh, bring the rest of the crew through. So we found this um, map on one of the walls in the office, the reception office. And we've taken a picture of it and put it on our laptop so that we can blow it up and have a look um, at this road, this track that we found, because it's not on Tracks for Africa and it's not on any of the GPSs. Currently, we are here in Semongkong and we need to get to Katsi. Um, the route that all GPS's and tracks for Africa bring up is traveling along the A5 all the way through to that point there just outside Roma and then back on the A3 all the way through to Tabatseka and then up on that dirt road to Katsi. We want to try and avoid that if possible and look for a little bit more adventurous route. So Jen and I have found this little track that comes along there up to Seng and then from Seng we turn right or just before Seng we turn right um, and drop down across that river all the way up to Matsunyane and then we join the A3 to Tabatseka and back up to Katsi. So that's the plan and that's the way we're going to be heading this morning. See you guys on the road. Cheers for now. So Jen's in bush baby and you can see I'm just walking the, the track, she's busy driving because the track disappeared from us so we're trying to find the road. Kevin down there trying to pick out a path for us. Seems rather narrow and treacherous. But yeah, we'll see how far we can. Okay, folks, um, we've reached a bit of an impasse. Um, we are currently here. Um, we've turned right just before staying, worked our way down to this point. And right at that point, as you can see from the videos coming up, the road is now impossible. Um, the locals have informed us that the road was washed away in the recent floods and uh, is yet to be rebuilt. So we cannot make the trip down into the valley here. 
cross that river and get up to Matsunyani. So we are now going to be doubling back um, and then when we get to that fork we're going to turn right, head through Seng, make our way along there, find a way through that point. The locals tell us that that point is very very narrow um, and not, and they don't think that we will do it with Bush Baby because Bush Baby is a truck not a bucky. Most, they say most land cruisers can't get through. Um, and then eventually get out, make our way through to the A3 um, and then right on to Tabatseka and then up to Katsi. So let's see how that little adventure plays out. Okay, so this is quite a rocky section and rather narrow. So I'm gonna have to direct Kevin through with Bush Baby. See how it goes. Perfect. Straight knot. And just like that, daylight quickly turned to darkness after many hours of ruts and rocks, leaving us to navigate with our trusted headlights. Good morning everybody. This is day four 
of our little expedition or recce across Lesotho. Um, we got to this campsite pretty late last night. We decided to just push on through um, so that we can get here rather than lose a, lose a day on the road. Um, the roads were pretty good on the tar road that is the last 90 k's from Tabatseka to Katsi was horrendous. Um, but we pushed pushed through and got to our campsite at about 3 a.m. That's it. That's all of that's all of Katsi Dam, and we are downstream Katsi Dam at a bush camp. We hope that you've enjoyed sharing the first part of this adventure. Join us on part two for more exciting times when we get snowed in.